welcome to Hannity. And tonight, actions speak louder than words. And Donald Trump, he proved that last night at the second presidential debate. Here are some of those highlights. If you look at uh, Bill Clinton, far worse, minor words, and his was action. His was what he's done to women. There's never been anybody in the history of politics in this nation that's been so abusive to women. But Bill Clinton was abusive to women. Hillary Clinton attacked those same women and attacked them viciously. We have a divided nation because people like her, and believe me, she has tremendous hate in her heart. Her and Obama, whether you like it or not, the way they got out of Iraq, the vacuum they've left, that's why ISIS formed in the first place. They started from that little area, and now they're in 32 different nations, Hillary. Congratulations. Great job. You know, it is, uh, it's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. <laughs> All right, so going into last night's presidential showdown, there was a media firestorm over comments that Donald Trump made over 11 years ago. Look, nobody's going to defend what Donald Trump said. They shouldn't. But here's the thing. Last night, we watched the debate, and those moderators needle and repeatedly press Donald Trump over his words from over a decade ago, while completely ignoring the actions of Hillary Clinton and her husband against women that have accused the president, the former president, of rape, sexual harassment, and public shaming. Now, here's the difference in all of this. Trump said offensive things, and he apologized, said he was sorry and embarrassed, while the Clintons actually did them and never apologized. Now, Hillary Clinton conveniently pretended she was outraged over Donald Trump's comments, but what about the scores of extramarital affairs that Bill Clinton had before and during his time in the White House, and of course, the lies both Hillary and Bill told about those affairs? Now, if Clinton, Hillary, is so disgusted by Trump's words, then why doesn't she feel the same way about her husband allegedly exposing himself to Paula Jones? In other words, he took his pants down. Was Hillary also outraged that her family had to pay $850,000 to settle that case with Paula Jones while Clinton supporters, remember, they were calling her a piece of trailer trash, drag a dollar through a trailer park, and by the way, engaged in blaming the victims. Remember that? Now, was uh, Hillary offended when a woman by the name of Juanita Broderick accused her husband of actual rape. Now, did Hillary ever investigate those allegations? Did she believe that Miss Broderick had a right to be believed or heard, as she now claims all victims of sexual assault have a right to? And then what about Kathleen Willey? Now, she claimed in the Oval Office, Bill Clinton groped, grabbed, fondled, and kissed her all against her will. So why did Hillary Clinton call Monica Lewinsky a, quote, narcissistic looney tune and ignore the lewd acts that Bill committed with Miss Lewinsky in the White House? And perhaps worst of all is the case of Kathy Shelton. Now, she is a woman who was raped when she was 12 years old and whose attacker Hillary Clinton defended and helped get a reduced sentence. So why did Hillary Clinton laugh on tape about the rape of a 12 year old girl and by the way um, this is a woman that said on tape oh basically admit she thought the guy was guilty now you're gonna hear from some of these women later in the program now liberals in the media they are so corrupt they're so biased now they should ask themselves this which is worse here Donald Trump's words or Bill Clinton's many actions and Hillary Clinton's silence and her long-standing active smears and of course cover-ups but let's be honest the media well they won't do anything to damage the Clintons in any way shape matter or form but they'll do everything to damage Donald Trump's campaign now here's proof according to the media research center over the weekend ABC NBC and CBS morning and evening news those shows covered the Trump 2005 tape for over 150 minutes. Now that compares to just 16 seconds given to Paula Jones in 1994 when she first came forward with allegations against Bill Clinton. Now the media also wants to hide the fact that this is a choice election. And of course, there are real state of the economy that Obama and Clinton have given you, the American people. At the end of the day, we don't have a preacher running for president right now. We do have people that are flawed, imperfect, all have sinned and fallen short. But look at these numbers. This is what this election should be about. 95 mil million of our fellow Americans are out of the labor force. And that includes a 20% increase in the number of black Americans who are no longer working under President Obama's policies. We have the lowest labor participation rate now since the 1970s. The worst economic recovery, if you even call it that, since the 1940s. Our homeowners 
ownership rate now is at the lowest in 51 years. There are 13 more Americans on food stamps than before Obama took office, and we've seen a 58 percent increase in African Americans on food stamps since Obama became president. One in five American families do not have a single family member in the workforce, and one in six American men, 18 to 34, prime working years, well, they're either in jail or living in mommy and daddy's basement. And of course, President Obama, by the time he leaves office, will accumulate more debt than every other president, all 43 presidents before him combined before he leaves office. Now, there's also the failure of Obamacare and Americans dealing with surging premiums and skyrocketing deductibles. Get this. I mean, the average increase for a family is $4,100. That's a lot of money. Oh, and I forgot to mention, 8 million more Americans in poverty since Obama became president. Also, U.S. foreign policy. That's been a disaster under Obama and Clinton. This is what the election should be about. ISIS expanding. Iraq and Syria are disasters. Their policies Iran is stronger than ever. Of course, they gave them the money, $150 billion. The Russian reset, a complete and utter failure and disaster. So what's worse? Donald Trump admitted it was wrong. Locker room talk over a decade ago, or the fact that Hillary Clinton wants to continue to expand upon President Obama's failed policies and failed presidency. Here with Reaction Tonight, Editor-in-Chief of Life Set and Fox News contributor, nationally syndicated radio host, Laura Ingram, Fox News contributor, Monica Crowley. You know what's amazing in all of this, Laura, I'll start with you, is the media never talked about the other women. We are 20, we're 29 days out of this election. They never brought it up. Donald Trump had to do their job last night and i thought he did it effectively but it speaks volumes about who the biggest campaign contributor to hillary is yeah let's just let's be clear about what this whole thing is not about sean this is not about democrats or frankly even republicans standing up for women it's not about that if, if these people uh, many of them who voted for bill clinton and enthusiastically cared about uh, women then my goodness they at least wouldn't have invited him to speak to uproarious applause at the democratic national convention and if republicans cared so much about women and offensive comments then they would have done a lot more to fight as hard as they're fighting right now against donald trump against hillary clinton for the same thing that she did but much worse than trump which is as you said just lacerate these women verbally or sending her henchmen out to undercut them and undermine them. That, that's really the offense of Hillary. Bill's, Bill's behavior was, you know, was disgusting and reprehensible, but she enabled this and she was part of it because of her role in tamping down the you know, so-called bimbo eruption. So the media didn't want to touch that. The Republican leadership, oh, we can't talk about that. That's unseemly. But they'll jump all over Trump because as we know, Sean, there are a lot of these people in leadership who never wanted him to win. They had to put a good face on it for a while That's because so many point. of the voters did. But they, they were not afraid of, of him losing. Right. They were afraid of him winning. Yeah, and they still are. You know, watch yeah. what Paul Ryan did today. What they're missing is they created this insurgency year because, as every exit poll showed in the primary, 65% of Republicans felt betrayed. Mm -hmm. And yet, I think Laura's dead on. They're more outraged over Trump because they don't like Trump. But yet, they never, they're more harsh in their criticism towards Trump than either Obama or Clinton. What does that say and about these That is weak because Donald Trump represents an existential threat to all, every Everything that those in power hold dear, it's power, it's government control, it's money and it's influence. They know that if Donald Trump gets elected, he's going to smash the existing order. That's why he is fighting a multi front war. He is fighting a war against Barack Obama, the president, the White House, the Democratic Party, Hillary Clinton, her campaign, the Republican establishment and the media. If he wins, Sean, it will be a flat out miracle because he is fighting no. off all of these that is very so powerful well said. and and influential forces Everybody's against that are them. coming at him. Yes, wow. it's because he, he must be destroyed. And the yeah. fact that Donald Trump had an extraordinary comeback moment uh, last night should be the story. And instead, once again, they're ripping him apart because if they let him go forward, if the American people put him into office, they know that it's game over for them. You know, and Laura, uh, to, to follow up on Monica's point, really well said it. And there was a drudge headline, Trump against the world before the That's debate right. last night, uh, which I think is pretty accurate. I've got to believe that the American people 
that are so fed up that may, they made this an insurgency year. We didn't make that happen. They made it happen, and the people that are most responsible are the people in Washington, that they failed on every they level to failed. serve the people of this country. Think about this, uh, Sean and Monica. Over the last couple of years, all we've heard from Capitol Hill, uh, the Republicans on Capitol Hill, is that they can't really stop Obama's agenda because they don't have the White House. They've been saying this for the last two years. Every time we say, block the executive amnesty, oh, well, we don't have the White House. Do something about Planned Parenthood funding. Well, we need the White House. We need veto power. And then they finally have someone who has a chance, and albeit it's, a, it's not a huge chance right now, but it's a chance to stop the Clinton corruption and stop this executive overreach. They finally have someone who can do it. And what do they do? After what was a masterful debate performance, they make the story the next day about how there's Republican disunity. Paul Ryan makes the day after that strong debate a story about himself on a moral high horse looking down on the, on the plane of all the, uh, all the plebes. And I find that to be so disappointing and maddening. For, for the people of this country, for our Supreme Court that is on the line. And I don't know how Paul Ryan thinks his better way agenda is going to get through a Hillary Clinton administration. That's yeah. ludicrous. It's, uh, it's absolutely ludicrous. I totally agree. Monica? Yeah, you know, when you look at the Trump phenomenon, it's actually the latest iteration of the Tea Party movement, which is the grassroots groundswell of regular, everyday working Americans who wanted to believe in the Republican Party, and yet time and again the GOP have let them down. They sent droves of Republicans to Washington in wave elections, uh, 2010, right, 2014, and even before that. There would not have been the need for a Tea Party movement. There would not have been a Donald Trump candidacy if the Republican Party had stayed true to its core objectives and core principles I'll, of limited I'll tell you this. fiscal responsibility. I think that old Republican order is dead. That's it's over. not coming back. It is over. And Paul Ryan won't be speaker very long. I can predict that and too. Look, the GOP establishment doesn't get it or they don't want to get it right. and they, they are now going to go extinct because this movement is not going away. Good to see you all. Thank you. Thank you and a quick programming note. The third and final presidential debate will take place next Tuesday in Las Vegas and Fox's own Chris Wallace will be moderating. You don't want to miss it. Make sure you tune into the Fox News Channel for the best coverage. And coming up next tonight right here on Hannity. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. Wow, the line that everybody was talking about from last night's debate. Coming up next, Jay Sekulow, Doug Schoen, Charlie Hurt, they'll join us. And so much. For you to say that there was nothing wrong with you deleting 39,000 emails, again, you should be ashamed of yourself. What you did, and this is after getting a subpoena from the United States Congress. We have to move on, you Secretary Clinton, you can respond, minute. but we got to move on. We, we want to give the audience the a, sector, a chance you'd be put here. In jail, let alone after getting a subpoena from the United States Secretary Congress. Clinton. You know, it is, uh, it's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. <laughs> Donald Trump last night saying Hillary Clinton deserves jail time for mishandling classified information on a private email server system. Joining us now with reaction, author of Unholy Alliance, the chief counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice, Jay Sekulow from the Washington Times, Charlie Hurt and former Clinton pollster, Fox News contributor, Doug Schoen. Jay, I have interviewed people military people that have had one incident where they yeah. mishandled classified information that lost right. their jobs, that in some cases were tried, in some cases going to jail over mishandling of one piece. And I was watching, I got home 4.30 in the morning last night, and I'm watching these other channels. Never before in the history of this country has anyone said that the opponent should be in jail. I'm like, never before in the history of the country did anyone break the law like she did and is running for the right. highest office. Right. Well, you're, you're exactly correct. I mean, look, the fact of the matter is, and I, I've said this a lot on, on your broadcast, and I'll say it again, there is no question in my mind that the FBI never intended to really do an investigation here. You know, just, Sean, since l last time I was with you last week, the fact is there's been more information that's been released. And, and these emails and what she did 
I go back to the initial server. The private server itself was a violation of the law. Rudy Giuliani has talked about, you know, 33 to 35 violations, uh, there multiple counts of this. I think, look, the, the, the FBI should be embarrassed because of James Comey's politicization. And that's what it was. He became a political figure in this, which is not the role of the FBI director. And the end result of that was not only was justice not served, but the idea that what Donald Trump said that I'm going to appoint a special counsel. By the way, there's a code of federal regulations that allows the Attorney General of the United States to, in fact, appoint an, a, a special counsel. And it would yeah. certainly be warranted in this case, because the FBI certainly has shown they're incapable of being impartial. You know, Doug, you gave Trump advice on this program, and you even said these issues, he's really threading a needle. Right. And you felt he hit the perfect right. pitch last night. Yeah, he did. Yeah. But let's put it in context. He's still about five or six points behind. And if he's going to win, not come close, win, he's got to expand his constituency beyond his base. He solidified his base, stabilized the race, but now has to go beyond it with an inclusive but message. don't you think that undecided voters last night also heard and saw, I mean, look at all the things, acid washed, bleach bit, deleted the emails. She started the birth birther movement, you know, her horrible double standard as it relates to women, her smearing of women um, on issue, her failure in Iran, her failure in Benghazi, her failure on the economy, her failure on vetting refugees. There was a lot of substance that there, there was. across. If he's going to win, he needs to hone into a couple of themes, change, corruption, open borders, her commitment to it, and free trade, which no. she is totally committed to. He has to make the case she's dishonest and cannot be well, trusted. He did that last night, very effectively. He's got to expand He's, it yeah. and have One two One thing cases. you said to me, that he should not be afraid to repeat himself. Right. That was right. interesting. All right, coming up, Donald Trump back on the campaign trail today, as Doug just mentioned. We're going to play highlights of his rally in Pennsylvania. We'll check in with Sheriff David Clark, Austin Goolsby, Amarosa here next. Also, before last night's debate, Trump held a press conference with three of Bill Clinton's accusers and a woman named Kathy Shelton. Kathy was raped at the age of 12, and Hillary Clinton defended her accuser, even though she thought he was guilty. I spoke with a few of the women after the debate last night. That and more straight ahead. Welcome back to Hannity. So the general election is only 29 days away. And after an electrifying debate performance, Donald Trump is back on the campaign trail today. Now, the GOP nominee was in Pennsylvania. Here are some of those highlights. So I want to thank you. I want to thank all of the great people of Pennsylvania. I went to school in Pennsylvania. They've taken our jobs out of Pennsylvania. We're going to be bringing them back, folks. Believe me. We're bringing them back. Oh, what these politicians have done to us. Not going to happen much longer. So everybody saw the debate last night. So let me tell you. When I said we are going to get a special prosecutor to figure this deal out. I have never been so ashamed of this country as what's gone on with Hillary Clinton. I have never seen anything like it. I have never, ever seen anything like it. You have never seen anything like it. They are so dishonest. Without the media, without the media, Hillary Clinton couldn't be elected dog catcher. I mean that. It's true. True. Here with Reaction, Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark, also senior advisor for African-American outreach for the Trump campaign. I only say Amorosa because I can't pronounce her last name. I, don't even, <laughs> I didn't even know you had a last name until uh, you told me the last time. And uh, you see the guy in the middle of the screen? That's Austin Goolsby. He's the guy responsible for the economic decline under Obama because he's a former Obama economic advisor. And you, yeah, exactly. Uh, I thank you for giving me full credit again. <laughs> You're very welcome. Come on, I take care of my friends. Um, all right, Amorosa, look, I know he needed, he came in with all the pressure and weight of the world on his shoulders last night. Mm -hmm. Everybody expecting, ah, uh, how's he gonna handle this? 
and he just blew it all out of the water. I've never seen a debate performance like that in my entire life. Been in radio 30 years, my 21st year here at Fox. It was pretty unprecedented. Well, I saw him right before he walked out. Mm -hmm. He came through and I said, how are you feeling? He's like, I'm ready. And I felt it. I felt that he was ready. He was focused. He was so clear, concise, and thorough with his vision for this nation. I was very mm -hmm. proud of him. Sheriff Clark, what he did last night was something that the media should have been doing this entire campaign, and that is he prosecuted the case against one of the most dishonest, corrupt uh, politicians that we've ever seen in our lifetime that has enriched herself more than any other politician. And frankly, on the issue of women, what the Clintons have done to women is beyond a national disgrace. Shauna was a thing of beauty. She came into this thing overconfident, underprepared and smug and it showed in her face look i like to use boxing analogies because this is going to be a slug fest for the next 29 days every time she threw a punch at him he effectively counter punched and when he was leading he knocked her off balance she was off balance all night look i i think too much stock is being put into this undecided voter these undecided voters are only in, undecided about one thing and it's really whether or not they're even going to vote not who to vote for i think we put too much stock into that what this did for donald trump last night is it re-energized his base he needs his base in the next 29 days he needs his base motivated highly organized and can't wait to get to the polls on November 8 or or if they haven't He's cast their, their ballots in early Hillary voting. Hillary Clinton can't get a and, crowd. I mean, Austin, in fairness. No, to, there's he, no enthusiasm. She yeah. she thought this was Look. just going to be a repeat of the first night. That's why I said she came in here overconfident. Look, he took it to her. And, and like I said, Big metaphorically time. speaking, because I know what the left will do with this, but he thumped her for 90 minutes. You know, Austin, when you go back to your buddy Obama, and, uh, you know, I tried to warn the country, and I was right, you were wrong, about him. Uh, at least he did have enthusiasm. He had big crowds. He had, he had people energized. She does not have hey. that. No. A, I told you, and that you almost are going to have to pay me for our bet. I said within two years of him being out of office, you're going to admit that he did an okay job as president. But B... The fact that Donald Hell's Trump gonna is getting over, these rallies, look, the fact that Donald Trump is getting these rallies of the same people who are screaming, lock her up, punch her in the face, that, that crowd, I don't know that's anybody exactly that said what punch he her doesn't face, need Austin. to become yeah, the president. Said that. Austin, I've listened, he's I've not going to be for him, and I've been he's a part not of these rallies. Become the president. They're not screaming, punch her in the face, Austin. You're being dramatic unnecessarily. Yeah. What but is, they is, are is, passionate okay. about this I'm country, not, uh, and they are about... Hang on. Fair enough. Rosa, you said something to me. That people, there's a side of Donald Trump but people don't know that you know. Yep. He cares about what's happening with people around him. He wants to make sure that they're comfortable, that they're happy, and more importantly, seeing him with his family. I think that that's the side that folks don't see when he lets his guard down. He's playing with his grandchildren or he's, he's talking to his sons. I think that you would know that Donald Trump has this side that America will connect with. Yeah. But instead, they're seeing this picture that's being painted by the other side that is not accurate. Sheriff, I think it was such a strong takedown last night, and I'll use a, a martial arts analysis. I mean, everything she tried to use against him, he turned back on her. I mean, that's that's verbal jujitsu, if you will. Sean, she had no answer for anything that he brought last night. But one of, the, one of the nice things that he got in, again, he went after the African-American vote. He courted the African-American vote last night. And you know what? When he did that, she had no response, no counter, because she knows that the conditions that black voters have been living in under Democrat control cities for the last half century are miserable and it's finally starting mm -hmm. to take hold that's why she didn't even come back with a response and by the on way that. under austin goolsby's economic plan what do we got 58 percent increase black americans on food stamps guys, we got a 20 percent increase black americans out of the labor force great job austin yourself. good job ownership down you're, right. kidding, you guys are kidding yourself <laughs> have you not seen that he's plunged okay you're gonna give me the last week's what 150,000 jobs created and then we, we discount today. another 500,000 out of the labor today. force all right. Oh, Good luck, boy. Austin. We'll see you. My bet look. game on. Bet on. <laughs> 29 days. And coming up next tonight, right here on Hannity. At 12 years old, Hillary put me through uh, something that you've never put a 12-year-old through. 
All right, before last night's debate, Donald Trump held a press conference with three of Bill Clinton's accusers, also a woman by the name of Kathy Sheldon. Now, she was raped when she was 12 years old, and Hillary Clinton defended the man accused of sexually assaulting her. Now, I spoke with Kathy, as well as Juanita Broderick and Kathleen Willey, last night after the debate. Plus, last night, I caught up with some of the liberals in the spin room, including John Podesta and Richard Trumko, who you see right there. Straight ahead. Hillary put me through uh, something that you've never put a 12-year-old through. Actions speak louder than words. Mr. Trump may have said some bad words, but Bill Clinton raped me and Hillary Clinton threatened me. Why did you say you touched me without consent, Mr. Trump? Uh -huh. Why don't you ask Bill Clinton that? Why don't you ask Bill Clinton that? All right, before last night's debate, Donald Trump did a press conference with three of Bill Clinton's accusers, Paula Jones, Kathleen Willey, and Juanita Broderick, and a woman named Kathy Shelton. She was allegedly raped at 12 years of age, and Hillary Clinton actually defended the man who was accused of sexually assaulting her. After the debate, I spoke with three of the victims. Watch. All right, just before the debate tonight, and it did come up during the debate tonight, is the behavior of Bill Clinton. These are women that have been affected by Bill or Hillary Clinton in some way. Kathy Shelton was 12 years old when she was a victim of rape, and the defense attorney, of course, uh, was Hillary Clinton in that case. Kathy, thank you for being with us. Uh, Kathleen Willie, I've known you many, many years. You tell a story about being groped and grabbed and fondled and kissed against your will in the Oval Office. And Juanita Broderick, you told me, was, I think it was one of, if not the hardest interview I ever did in my life, when I went to your place in, in Arkansas right. and I did the second interview with you. Right, it was hard to tell. You know. it, yes, yeah. I know, and for you it was hard to tell and hard yeah. to live through and you have made a point of coming all the way here. Tell me why. I just think it's so important when people were talking about, Hillary and her campaign were talking about the words that uh, Donald Trump uttered and he's very embarrassed. He's, he, he, he's regretful, he's apologetic for those words, but I've never heard one apology for what Hillary Clinton did to me when she threatened me after her husband raped me. I did have an apology from Bill Clinton, although he'll never admit it, but I'd like to see him do it in person. You know, they took away a lot from me and uh, years that I'll never get back. Uh, and um, I, I just thought it was important to say that. Yeah. Do you think that issue is to bed your presence here? You wanted to send a message, actions are different than words? I, I think the thing that concerns me the most is the mainstream media continues to talk about Bill Clinton's infidelities. Rape, sexual assault, sexual harassment are not infidel. Right. They're not. Right. They are crimes and they are felonies. And that's why I'm here. I want to stress that. Kathy, your story is different. You s sadly went through a rape when you were 12 years old. The, pro the, the defense attorney was Hillary Clinton. A tape was revealed that shows her laughing and say, oh, I don't, he took a lie detector test, of course he passed, but then she goes on to say, I forever lost faith in lie detector tests, which means she knew or felt he was guilty, but she defended this man, and as part of the defense, smeared you. Yes, sir, and at 12 years old, she put me through so much, and I didn't even know until 2006 that she was my defense attorney, or the defense's attorney, and she put me through so much that no child would want to go through, and at every speech I've heard her take, and she says, I'm for children and I'm for women. Okay, I'm a child at 12 years old. Evidently, she said I. Uh, she knew me for six months, and um, I found I liked older men. I only lived there two months, so how could she know me, know me for six months? So she smeared you. Yes, sir, she did. And joining us now is someone who saw firsthand Bill Clinton's questionable conduct in the White House, the author of Crisis of Character, former Secret Service officer Gary Byrne, also with us, Fox News contributor Mercedes Schlapp. Uh, officer Byrne, you tell stories about him and women in the Oval Office, and specifically, you even tried to help clean up some of the mess without being too graphic. Yeah, first of all, Sean, thank you. It's nice to see you again. Uh, yes, I describe a story in my book, Crisis of Character, where um, after a, um, an 
a uh, interlude with with a woman um, the Navy steward brought forward some towels that had uh, obviously fluids from a man and uh, he was embarrassed he was appalled and um, and I felt bad for the steward so I had him put the towels in a plastic bag and I destroyed them um, many of these things um, that you hear these women talk about um, I don't know how people can't believe them and you saw this did. happen on a fairly regular basis yeah, I talk about in my book, I, I testified to uh, at least one incident with towels and then another incident with tissues and lipstick. And um, uh, and it happened so often that it, it, we had a hard time of keeping track of who it could have been. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Mercedes, I know you and Matt, your husband, have come under fire for supporting Donald Trump. And we saw what Paul Ryan did today in Republican outrage over Donald Trump's words. But they're silent about Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton's actions and the and the systematic smearing, slander, besmirching of these women. I, for the life of me, cannot understand what is wrong with these people. Well, I find that it, for us, we would want to see the party be united. Uh, Sean, I think, you know, at this point, it's very easy to point the finger all at Donald Trump and obviously the, 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 the massive media coverage of the really offensive uh, video that, and audio that we uh, had to listen to. Uh, but at the same time, I do think that it's important for uh, the Ryan and, and, and those in Congress to really recognize that Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton have a history of being Abusing really what they've done, of targeting, humiliating, dis them. discrediting yeah. women, uh, I think as Gary pointed out. And the fact is, is that do we really want to reintroduce that into the White House? And I think that's a very critical question that yeah. American voters have to ask themselves, John. And, and Hillary so I Clinton do find on this it tape, Mercedes, where she's laughing and bragging. Oh, I even gave the rapist a lie detector test and he passed it, which forever, you know, uh, took away any trust I have in lie detector test knowing that he's guilty and this woman has now suffered the rest of her life I how is if Donald Trump did that what it, would it be like you know I think again it, it's just a double standard and I think that <laughs> it would be so much more helpful for Republicans to come together and defeat Hillary Clinton with so much that's on the line in terms of the agenda that we need to move forward in America in terms of the Supreme Court, yeah. in terms of economic growth. But unfortunately, we're stuck in this battle of yeah. the state, the, the video that was absolutely offensive, indefensible, offensive, indefensible. But at the same time, he has apologized. But I don't think many of these Republicans are willing to forgive him. All right, guys, thank you all for being with us. Appreciate it. Also, last night, I caught up with John Podesta, Senator Claire McCaskill, Richard Trumka, AFL-CIO in the spin room after the debate. We'll show you those interviews straight ahead. Welcome back to Hannity. So last night, right after the debate, I went into the spin room and I got a chance to confront some liberals that will never come on the show about their support of Hillary Clinton and their left wing agenda. Let's take a look. So eight years of Obama, the worst economic statistics. Here you have a guy. I don't, I don't agree with that, well, by the way. Well, it doesn't matter. They're just, they're it facts. Much it no. was much worse under George Bush. In the we eight were years. losing 850,000 okay. jobs a month. It, the so were you. Eight, we have 12 million more Americans on food stamps under Obama. Eight million more in poverty under Obama. Lowest wait, labor wait, participation wait, wait under Obama. Wait, wait a second. That's because all of the people that were unemployed They're Bush's under George fault. Bush. It's all Bush's fault. No, he had eight years to no, fix it. No, it isn't. It's the Congress now, this uh, Congress, that refused to do anything to fix it. Don't you, you love the working guy? Second, you like wait, the working guy? I do, but listen well, to me. Let me ask you this. No, no. Listen to me a for a second. Hi. You remember what Mitch McConnell said? We'll do anything to stop Obama from getting real. I don't care what Mitch McConnell said. Well, I do, okay. because he was a Republican. He's in charge of the Senate, and he won't be for much longer because he didn't try to solve problems. You care about he the working guy? Do. You care about the working guy? I love the you working love the, guy. So do I. That's my fidelity. Yeah. Okay, that's my fidelity. That's my life. That's my background. My grandparents came here you, with a nickel be, in their pocket. Then Hang you on. You shouldn't be supporting Republicans. No, what you, you should, should be, be what you Democrat. should be supporting are the people. I never, in all those years I worked in restaurants, washing dishes, cooking. Waiting How many tables. Years was that? Ten years of my life. Eleven yeah. years of my life. Good for okay? you. I worked another ten or eleven years doing construction. I never got a job from a poor guy. Not one time in my life. Did you? Yeah. Who? What well, poor guy hired you? Every coal company I worked for said that they were never making money. They were all poor. 
<laughs> Good answer, but you never got a job from a poor guy, that's for sure. All right, what do you think of the debate? I thought uh, she did a terrific job. I thought the stunt that he pulled at the beginning of the debate. What stunt? The, you know, having the press come in the room with the women there. And I thought it was showed him being really maybe more defiant than contrite. Well, Hillary said that r victims of sexual assault should be believed. Now, I know that everyone's upset about the words of Donald Trump, but we do have a president that was impeached. He did have sex in the Oval Office. We do have a blue dress. Cigars were mentioned. And on top of that, then you got a rape allegation and an allegation that he groped, grabbed, fondled, and kissed a woman. Should we believe those women or are they liars? Here's what I think we should do. I asked if you should believe them or are they liars? I, I have no idea. I, oh, should I, we investigate it? I think that they were investigated. No. And here's, and here's what I would say about that. Hillary Clinton is on the ballot. Who and investigated? Who investigated? Sean, what she has done is she has stayed true to her vows through good and bad. Mm -hmm. She stuck with her marriage. She didn't trade him in for a younger was it, model. Was it wrong when she called Monica Lewinsky a narcissistic loony tune? I'm going to say, Sean, I actually believe that Hillary Clinton mm -hmm. has lived up to trying to do what you need why, to do. Why don't you? Why all you politicians never answer questions? Well, was you it don't wrong? Want me to answer the question. Was it? Was it wrong you that she called me. her a narcissistic you, loony you tune? That's an easy that, question. I think you think this. Is Perry Mason, and I'm going to break down on the stand. This no, I like Perry you. I know I like. I've always liked you. Well, good. Okay, so was it wrong that she said that? Was it wrong? She I said she'd crucify Jennifer this Flowers. This is not what the American people wanted to hear tonight, and she didn't go there. He wanted. No, to she did her. go there. Over. No, she yeah, did. Not. She did. She did not go there. She, she went there saying, about the audio, and she said he's unfit to be president. Well, I for a lot of reasons, including his lack. How about him not even talking to his vice president? But well, why don't you? One of the most important. Why don't? Why don't you? Why don't you? Well, what about the fact? that Hillary Clinton's enriched herself. She's become a multi-millionaire giving speeches. Don't you think she should release the Wall Street speeches now that it's been revealed so that she believes in a philosophy that you act one way in public and another way behind the scenes? Isn't I, that duplicitous? I think she tried to explain that tonight, and I don't think really anybody should get lectured from Donald Trump really? about, about getting rich at other people's expense. Uh -huh. All the littered contractors along his career that he has. You, have you ever met any? I, absolutely. Who have you met? What are the names? I, I, the ones that have been talking about in the press there's many of them that but you never met one no I have not met them okay. have you no I haven't because okay. I don't know if they exist here's my next question because I think this is really important if Hillary says that these women should be believed that are victims of sexual assault which I think is one of them I have a daughter I have three sisters and I'm obviously my mother who passed away I can't imagine I know words are bad I agree with that and I think what he said on the tape I was appropriate that he apologized it was appropriate that he said he was embarrassed Go try. and okay and but Hillary was part of a machine that smeared Monica. There's been a machine. That, well, and you didn't. Hang on, but you're not answering. Decades. Narcissistic Looney Tune is what she called her. Listen, I don't know when she said that. I don't know what she knew when she said it. I think a lot of women. Should she apologize like Donald Trump apologized? I, I, Donald Trump apologized tonight. Yes. Barely. Seriously. All right. So going into this debate, the big question was comments by by Donald Trump. But I have the real question. You have more women, and we have Hillary uh, Clinton. And Bill Clinton have smeared Kathleen Willey, Monica Lewinsky. Hillary said she was a narcissistic loony to it. I ask you, why would words of Donald Trump mean more than the actions of Bill and the smearing of by Bill and Hillary? You know, uh, why? Wh when did this come up? When he lost the first debate, walked in. You're not answering my question. Said he's going to go back to 20-year-old matters. Why does his word? Why?